like to welcome y'all to a new episode of So Unprofessional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We up in here at Kings and Queens. Kings and Queens. I'm a king, you're a queen. No. You're light skin. This is uh, African cuisine, and I'm darker than you. So I'm the king, and uh, you're a queen. I mean, I'm like the African after we colonized, and the no. colonizer done had kids by the, to the people he oppressed. No, no. You're like the outcast albino. And now I'm the higher class because I'm nice. You're like the albino that they put out for tribes. You got a roll, bro. It's like Puerto Rico. Yeah, man. You're like like the, you ain't, we ain't know they had like dark skinned Puerto Ricans. Yeah, you like the white wolf, man. You got a roll. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, but before we get all of this started, just to all my uh, Patriots fans that's watching. We don't care about the Patriots. We want to say go Patriots. Everything we got till we got everything. You understand what I'm saying? No, I don't understand. Everything we got. That's six rings. We're the greatest team in NFL history. And, you know. No one cares. Everyone cares. No one cares. You care. That's why you're upset. I don't care. And your team ass. And I told you your team wasn't going to go to Super Bowl this year. How about that? Solid. All right. All right, so there's a man in Denver. Okay. Who's been charged with raping four women. <laughs> Apparently, Byron Whitehorn, his name is Byron Whitehorn, but okay. he's charged with assaulting four women as they exited the bar. Uh, apparently, as they came out the bar drunk, he offered them a ride home, but instead of giving them a ride home. They got a ride took on the them night to the side. They got a ride. You gotta make fun of it, <laughs> they man. Got, they got a ride on Space Mountain. They got a ride on something. <laughs> Look, we're supposed stuff. to open the segment. It's supposed to tell women not to take rides with strangers after they come out the bar. Yo, it's not a laughing matter, man. I guess I'm just laughing because people so predatory. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, so you went to the bar and you was sober and watched these young ladies get drunk so that you could front like you was going Uber them home but you really Ubered them to some dick. Yo, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm more upset about like these females. What is this world coming to, man? Yeah, I guess it's the same world we always been in. No. But I'm, I'm just a little upset by like, these girls ain't had no friends that was like, you know, People don't had, go with him. Yeah, you know I mean, they just go into the bar by themselves. Where was the ugly them. fat friend? Yo, I hate the ugly fat friend. The ugly fat friend has the strongest moral compass of all the homegirls. Cause the ugly fat friend would have been like, nah, <laughs> you ain't going with him. I got my car, you good. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened when you don't got the ugly friend with you. Yep. Ugly friend gonna hold you down, man. You know what, we need to be more politically correct. The overweight, less attractive friend. No, I don't wanna say shit like that. I wanna say the ugly fat friend. I'm going to stick with ugly fat friend. I don't like whatever you want to call it. She, she, she's a soldier, though. She serve a purpose. Like, if you got a wife, you got to ensure that your wife has an ugly fat friend. Your wife won't cheat on you. Yo, my wife ain't been out with no ugly fat friend. Oh, man. I'm going to plead the fifth. Shit. Yeah, I got to find my wife an ugly Uh, Less... A, attractive, slightly overweight friend. Yeah. That's how we gonna do it. Okay. So, PSA to all women, please do not get in the strange man's car. And get yourself an ugly fat friend and take them with you when you wanna get drunk at bars. Because it's no one to protect you if you don't. I mean. Why the ugly fat friend always sober too? Because they're fat and when you fat, it takes longer <laughs> to get drunk. And so, and then they ugly. So like when you ugly, like the liquor, the liquor be scared of you. The liquor like, oh shit. <laughs> so you gotta have, you gotta have the ugly fat friend. You know what I'm saying? He said the liquor be scared. That's the, I yeah. Like that. That's the moral of the story. Get an ugly fat friend. Dude, stop being rapers, and women get you an ugly fat friend. 
to make sure you they help you and protect you from the rapers. You know what I mean? If it works. It works, man. You tell me when you got some ass while the ugly fat friend was there. Never. As I just want some just and listen, anybody watching the show, tell us when <laughs> and what year it was that you got some ass while the ugly fat friend was there. The ugly fat you and you call the homie to be like, yo, I need you to take one for the team with the ugly fat friend. <laughs> The ugly fat friend will peep the deception when y'all walk through the door. And now, you're, now, you're, now your man, his, his uh, ego hurt because he couldn't even get no ass from the ugly fat friend. And she was still cock blocking the whole fucking like, top. You call up the friend, you know he'll get no ass. Yeah, he be like, like, yo, he'll go for it. You hit, him up like, you hit him up like, yo, so what happened with you and the ugly fat friend? Yo, bro, this bitch ain't getting no ass. Hey, man, get you an ugly fat friend, man. Ready right now. We ain't ready right now. You better stop. Man, I could block. That's all I gotta do is block. Get around some African gangs and switch up. This is heritage, man. We be, be selling bricks to them. That's how he knew how to get here and park his car in the alley. We ain't even see that alley. They don't have any sound. Oh, he drops up on the floor. Uh oh. What do you have there? You just have ice just sitting around on the floor. Hmm. Let <laughs> me do this bullshit. Did I really just watch this shit? Hey, bro, hey, bro. This motherfucker <laughs> threw some ice on the floor and then pretended to slip on the ice so he could get a lawsuit. Who's that? He's that shit, right? Oh, listen, man, listen, at the end of the day, listen, man, he got to get it how we live, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't knock you for trying to get over, but God damn, bro, you got to do a better acting job. You got to be a little smarter than that. Yeah, man, yo. <laughs> you got at least look for the cameras. They had it all. They, they, they got some good cameras, yo. too. They, they not them bodega but Where was he at? What store was he in? I don't know. No. Big brother always watching. You out here, they saw you faking with your faking ass. <laughs> Where you got your stuff at, baby. I'm tired of contacting people. You, you got uh, pieces of them, you know what I mean? Contact rappers, like, oh, we got Brizzy. Like, niggas just show up. <laughs> oh, I own this too, don't even worry about it. Hold on. I got a T, jeez. You acting real, you real, you acting real, you on air today. I don't know what's up with you. Make sure T get the topics next time, man. That's what I'm saying. What did like, you do today? Slap. Yeah, I got a couple. Just chill, T, chill. Cause he fell in the dark. <laughs> it's cool T splitting, splitting to the white meat. That's all. Cheers to more light skin kids. Cheers to more light skin kids. Really, cheers to more light skin kids. We really know this. So we got a whole bunch of dark skinned black men. Uh huh. With white wives. Toasting to toasting the, the light skin kids. That's an L for all light skinned people. <laughs> Like, what? if you like skin, you just took an L. How is it an L for the light skinned people? It should be an L for the dark skinned dudes that's toasting it up. Nah, it's an L for all light skinned people in that situation because it was like uh, self promotion. Self <laughs> But it wasn't no light skinned people there. Yes, it was, the kids. But they had nothing to do with it. I think that. Uh, I think that's an L for dark skinned dudes. Like I, that. I think it's just an L for all those black men. That's sitting at that table? Yeah, because. I mean, I dig it. Like you want to, you cherish your kid regardless of the shade or their skin. But like, you really on Instagram talking about toast to our light skinned kids? Why are these white women there? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Well, they, they the ones helping them getting light skinned kids. I mean, true. But I mean, I just feel like at the end of the day, though, like, I don't know. That was just, uh, it just, was inappropriate. You I'm know just what trying saying? to figure out what type of self hatred 
occurs to make you do that? I mean, you got to think, man. When you play for the Chargers, you already hate yourself anyway. Because <laughs> you already know that your career not going nowhere. So then... The black, the black girls don't the black girls don't want you because you play for the Chargers. <laughs> and so now you gotta get the white women. The white women want you because you play for the Chargers. You're gonna spend all your money on them. <laughs> and now you got light skinned kids. Yeah, that's that's my take on that. I mean I I think it's about time. We gotta get rid of colorism. No, I'm cool with colorism. <laughs> Just get rid of the Chargers. You know what I'm saying? Like none of this happens if the if the Chargers wasn't in the NFL no more. So fuck them and fuck the Chargers. And that's my stance. I thought we were supposed to take like a more uh, intelligent point of view to colorism. Even though we do a lot on the show. I'm saying uh, my approach to colorism is uh, get over it. All right, I take it for that. Yeah. Right, so another story. Okay. A gentleman from Was Georgia. he a gentleman? I don't know. You, All would, right. you would have to ask these women if he was a gentleman. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, his name is Dominique, so. I Not guess. another raper. <laughs> you know what? This is like two stories. Uh, Dominique Smith, who's 29. Okay. He broke into Hill Watson People's Funeral Service. Okay. This is a funeral home and had anal sex with a woman's corpse. He had forced anal <laughs> sodomy with a dead woman? <laughs> Yeah. He's going to jail. Yeah. He's going to jail for raping a dead woman. All right. Okay. As long as he got caught. He's one of us, too. He one of who? A black person. He's not light-skinned, though. He's he ain't one of us. <laughs> How he one of us? I mean, I meant black person. Who said he was black? I mean, he's bl he looks black with dreads. Nope, he ain't a black person. He's a nigga. Look. It's a big difference between a black person and a nigga. You raping dead corpses, that's nigga shit. No, that's that Pill Cosby shit. No, he ain't. He, they, they Pill, Cosby, Pill Cosby wasn't down with necrophilia. That's yeah. necrophilia. That's shit that demons do. He ain't one of us. Don't give him to me. You, he part of your family. He ain't down with me. Nah, he dark skin with dreads. He was dark skin. Well, you are dark skin. You had dreads. Yeah, but my dreads was pure. <laughs> that motherfucker, bro. He from New Orleans somewhere. Where are you from? He from Georgia. Yeah, all that goofy shit down there, man. <laughs> that's that. That's that backwoods weed. Yeah, all that. that all that Melaka York shit, man. <laughs> that's him. I'm cool off him, man. Don't talk to me about him, man. We here with the owner of Kings and Queens, yep. not being a restaurant. Yeah. Upper Darby. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, life is too short for average food, so you know why they're here, right? Yep. So I'm gonna just be honest, we'll even start this. I've never eaten anything from Liberia. Oh, man. Like, not even a female from Liberia. Listen, you, you <laughs> missing- that? Why couldn't we listen, be? We had to go there already. You missing two, two, two of the best things I mean, in that's, life. That's what I hear. One of my best friends from school is Liberian. You know what I'm saying? He took me to his, to his mom's house before down in Virginia. They was drinking a lot of Heineken. And I passed up on the food for Heineken. Oh, and I man. never got a chance to go back down and take advantage of the food. They probably had some palm wine there too, man. Yeah, man. Heineken. So you got us all set out right here, man. Talk to us, man. Tell us about yourself, man. Tell us about uh, how, how this even came about for you. Um, basically, we four going to five years going to the business, man. Thank God for my team and I. We definitely, I definitely put it together so we got to be at where we at right now. Um, we've been, we start off at 49th on Woodland in Southwest. Mm -hmm. It was basically like a little corner store. I mean, like a window, not a corner store per se, but at the corner of 49th on Woodland, we start out with um, just takeout and delivery. I wanted to get into the restaurant business, but it's like restaurant business is costly. Yeah. So I'm like, Man, well, what's a way I can get into it but then still make an effect? Around that time, you notice that a lot of like foreigners that may have their locations, they don't deliver. Like, uh, so I'm like, you know what? Let me make an effective um, takeout and delivery. So around that time I decided to do it, boom. Grubhub just bust out the window. 
Wow. So I was like the first on Grubhub when it comes to African food and mm -hmm. a lot around the, around the neighborhood. Yeah. And Grubhub was basically started from the university. Yeah. Nobody really knew it on the Southwest side. So when Grubhub first came to Philly, basically we was the first to be on Grubhub. We had Drexel University, um, University of Penn, shout out to them. They show a lot of love. But we had like the universities on lock on the Grubhub on delivery. Yeah. And I probably, and I had like my little delivery card too that I'll deliver to people that yeah. Grubhub can deliver to. So we started from there about four going to five years ago. And um, the dream was just to make an impact. Like yeah. I said, life is too short for average food. Just to basically give everybody the experience of the Liberian culture. Okay. And I figured out the best way to do that in order for everybody to get experience of the culture is start from the food. Yeah. You start from the food, then, then I mean, you might get a woman. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> It's only two ways. It's only three ways to share culture, man. You yes, know what sir. I mean? I mean, I, I do see the food looks very healthy. Yes. And it mm. does look like you make a lot of stuff from scratch. Yeah, and I yeah. have noticed, you know, you know, as Barksdale was talking about, you know, women tend to, you know, taste a little bit better when they got healthy food up in them. Yeah, that's there. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. You can I'm, tell when the chick been eating from the corner store. <laughs> she been, she been putting, store. She been spinning her stamps on hoagies <laughs> and crab legs. Like, yeah. this don't taste right. No, it's not right. <laughs> now, man, one thing I could say, man, Liberian food, like 99, I can't not even, I say 100% of it is plant-based. Mm -hmm. Everything we cook is from plant-based. Yeah. It could be the plantains, the greens that we eat, um, the stews that we make. Everything is plant-based. Okay. Because, you know, back home, we got our surroundings. We got to take stuff. We got to grow the rice or yeah. we got to basically could uh, use that plant to make something else to use this. So we use our natural resources. Yeah. So everything we eat is plant-based. That's one thing I love about Liberian food and my culture. Yeah. So I felt safe pushing something that is not like massively grown or mm -hmm. um, it's toxics put in it in yeah. order for it to like survive for years or for months. So that's why I felt like as if our food was something to put, something I feel everybody will enjoy. So that's, well, that's one reason why I definitely got into the business. And mm -hmm. with my family being in the restaurant business for so long, uh, my late grandma, she had a place back in Ganta in Liberia. Uh, that basically, from hearing her story while growing up, she used the restaurant to put like all 12, 12 um, of her kids, my uncles and aunts, to school. So like from that, inspiring me is like, damn, mm -hmm. like, it gotta be something in the food. It gotta be yeah. something. Yeah. So I decided just to bring the same thing in. Like I said, four going on five years, we basically elevated from where we was at from a window yeah. to a second location before. This is the third location where we at. This is our biggest location ever. We got first floor, second floor. Um, just giving people the vibes of Liberia, like yeah. the vibes of Africa. Yeah, that sounds you know? so. I know you're not cooking now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know you, you, you know I mean? You're a boss, you got a business to run. No, I cook, but, I, I cook, I, I but, cook. But how did you get started cooking? How did you get started cooking? Um, damn. To tell you the truth, um, I'm a foodie, that's one thing. Okay. I like food, I'm a foodie. I always watch my mom prepare food for my dad every single day when he come home, like, always had a hot place off. My mom, she's a cook, like, she always be cooking. Mm -hmm. So from watching that, um, I actually started off with making Caribbean food. Okay. Like, um, I'll have these big cookouts or these big events. I always did events. So I'll, I'll cook um, jerk chicken. Was my, like, like, my jerk chicken? Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I mean, I learned from the best of the best from Yard. Mm -hmm. So I would, like, cook it up, like, big, big pots of rice, big pots of chicken mm -hmm. for the whole cookout. Feed, like, 100 people and some yeah. change. So, like, I basically start off from there and just, like, doing things from there. And then basically... Basically, at that time, I wasn't a master at African cooking. Like, mm -hmm. it take techniques. Yeah. Like, a sauce may take, like, two hours to make and boil. Yeah. Like, just to cook down something you call potato greens, cassava leaf. The process and way to cook it is, like, you got to mentally be there and kind of know, like, what to put in these sauces and what the process is. Okay. So, I didn't really learn that process until, like, probably, like, six to eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And, like, as I grew and grew... I mastered the process. I started adding my own techniques to it from the American culture, from the uh, Jamaican culture, mm -hmm. um, and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. like, and I just kind of 
kept on moving on from there. I created every the basically the two main things on our, our menu, the country dry rice and signature. I basically sat down there, brainstormed, and created that from scratch. And um, just to just to put things in perspective and things like that. So, um, I guess like moving from the from where you said you had the window situation mm -hmm. to the situation where we are right now. You know, what type of barriers did you encounter? Man, city hall is rough, man. Yeah, that's when I could tell you like, and there's there's no manuscript. There's none of that. Like literally, you literally got to go trial and error. Everything was a trial and error. I never been in a restaurant business mm -hmm. before in America. Mm -hmm. I never owned a restaurant. I never did none of that. I basically just did my research, trial and error. I go down to city hall one day. They was rude. Tell me one thing. I gotta come back and fix it. I go down again next day. No, can't do that. You got what I mean? Like, yeah. I just basically kept on going down there and like finding loops, finding this. You don't really have to do this. You don't have to do that. Because everybody wants a piece of the pie when you're creating something. Yeah. That's the thing about creating something. Like everybody wants a piece of that pie. Mm -hmm. So you got to break people off. Yeah. But you're basically breaking it off, breaking them off the legal way. Like, yeah. you need a blueprint. Yeah. You need this, you need that. Like, that's basically yeah. what it is. And so do you intend for this to be like a family business? Like, if you got little sons and daughters you plan on, you plan on passing this family business down to them? Uh, most definitely. I mean, like, uh, we're we looking at a lot of franchises. I yeah. mean, uh, the whole point is to, is to grow, mm -hmm. grow into a fine dining aspect. Um, the fine is I feel as if my food and our food within our culture is so delicate that it shouldn't be withheld. Yeah. Just like on a to-go or just stuck within the like within the areas that yeah. we live in i feel as if that the whole world should be inspired like mm -hmm. people like oprah people like jay-z people like bill gates like they need that effort that like brand cuisine yeah. culture mm -hmm. if they can get it the right way yeah and things like that they need that culture and mm -hmm. i'm sure they'll enjoy that culture so just like what about the culture do you think people need to know um um, one thing about the culture, I think they need to know, like, we're open. I mean, like, it's inspiring. Um, the culture within, it can motivate you in life to just take things one day at a time and just just enjoy life, man. Yeah. Like, uh, that's, what, that's what we're doing in Africa. Like, we, we, we enjoy life. We try to look at the little things. And yeah. um, like I said, deep, deep down inside from the natural resources, see what we can make from there and just kind of kind of grow with a net. Now, do, I know, uh, you know, in school they taught us about Liberia and that uh, uh, it was a lot of the free slaves went back over to Liberia. Mm -hmm. Do you come from that heritage or are you from like the natives to the, uh, to the country? Well, you can't really, I'm basically from the natives in general, but you can't really tell. Yeah. I mean, I say from the natives because I don't really see a lot of my family that are in America. Mm -hmm. uh, back, well, I'm sure, like yeah. deep down, and like deep down the line, yeah. they are from America. Because mm -hmm. like the way Liberia is set up, and the way we were uh, colonized, yeah. whatsoever, um, America, we t we take a lot from America. We take as in the style, the the items that are in Liberia, the culture. You'd be surprised. A lot of Liberians know more about America than. Mm -hmm. Than um yeah, than Americans know by Liberian. Yeah. Because you see a lot of people look at when once Americans even check out our flag, they like, damn, this like looks like American flag. Yeah. But they don't realize the story behind Liberia or how Liberia is the closest uh, the, the uh, the closest country to America when it comes to Africa. Mm -hmm. We like that's why we always got the support from the from the government and things like that. Yeah. Just from the way things roll. Even I think it's the place you ever heard Firestone. Yeah. Firestone Tires? Yeah. Mm -hmm. first fact, it was in Liberia. Wow. Okay. Like, we're known for rubber. Mm -hmm. So, sadly, things happen. <laughs> America brought the rubber over. Yeah. I ain't really gonna speak on that. Yeah, well, you know they came over here. They, <laughs> they always came over here still in <laughs> <and sneak. laughs> I, I, can't, I can't speak on that, John. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't gotta speak on it. That's why I'm here. Let me speak on it. Fucking demons. Thieves. Some of them. Colonizers. Some of them. But they're all welcome to come enjoy some food, though. Yeah. Yeah, and so this spread looks good, bro. Tell the people what you got here for us right now. You know, I'm, I'm kind of oblivious to what all this is right here. 
All right, so right here, um, this is our famous Royal Punch right there. Okay. I'm saying this, this right here is a kicker, man. So is it just punch or it got like a nah, little extra it, punch? Nah, it, it's just punch, it's just oh, punch. Okay. It's <laughs> punch, man. You guys gotta dig in on that. Let, okay. Let me know what y'all think. All right. It's that That's Royal Punch. So, uh, I just want, I, I need the whole layout because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a bigger gonna, person. So, you know, I'm you going to punch and I'm, you you I'm no, going to go through the whole right, thing I'm in one. Sip on the punch. So, right here, we got the plantains. Okay. We got the sweet plantains. Okay. And we have an onion gravy, uh, sweet bell pepper onion gravy, just to get our plantains. It's just that feel. It's a good uh, uh, just that feel and, and like cake. And, and that cake. No, it's not hot. Oh, it's not hot. It's not oh, hot right. at all. Just to get that take uh, that moisture. Let's say gravy and plantain. Okay. Because we like gravy and plantain a lot in our country. Okay. We sometimes we ate the plantain alone, but we like gravy to go with it. Okay. And then this right, we got infamous jello rice. This one here got um, chicken inside and beef. Um, jello fries is something in uh, West African culture. We all fight over like you know how you fight with me to make best mac and cheese. Yeah. Like Ghana, Liberia. Senegal, we all fight. Like, who makes the best jello? I mean, we already know who makes the, the best, best jello. Okay, I'm about to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We but, know who makes I it. I mean, we, we know who makes the best jello, which is Liberia for sure. But we, I mean, I like to give other people chances. Okay. Too, so, who makes the like, second best? The second best? Probably Liberia. Liberia. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, third Liberia, best. Liberia. <laughs> 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 Dylan, 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 Dylan. And Dylan. It just, uh, yeah. just depends on who buy what house you go to. That's like. it. That's it. Well, and, and what's in this jello of rice? Uh, chicken, uh, chicken breast and beef. That. No, he said, I, he pointed to that one. My bad. No, it's they're the both same the same. Thing, right? Okay. I mean, I got y'all two pairs. And like, I'm well, listen, man, that's enough rapping. I know, man. I, I love some plantain. Let's just get busy, man. So I know it got to be good. Yeah. So. You said this is some sort of gravy? Yeah. So do I pour the gravy on yeah. top of the planter? Yeah, you, so, you can. Should I really be eating with a, with a, with a utensils? Yeah. You, you sure? These are utensils food. If you got fufu and things like that, I okay. mean, I only heard of fufu, but yeah, I heard of fufu. you take that and, 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 you, then, and you, you eat that with your hand. But I'm saying most definitely. That, I'm eating that with my hand, bro. No, that's banging. I've never had Don't like plantain me. that wasn't like real sweet. But that's, you know, it definitely, it tastes good. But like I just never potatoes. had it with like onions. Oh. Oh. Tastes like home fries. This is great. Tastes like what? Home fries. Home fries? Nah, it tastes better than home fries. <laughs> I always no, say home fries. We're supposed to be doing an interview, right? I am interviewing. I'm interviewing the food. Well, I'm just saying, but I don't know if I, you know, that punch is good, though. Falafel rice. How are you? You said it was jello. Oh, jello, jello rice. I'm sorry. Come on, man. You just, <laughs> Shut you up. just disrespected a whole country. I did. I'm sorry. You can't play with that jello. I ain't gonna lie to you, guys. <laughs> can't play with the jello. So, so what's better, jello or um, macaroni and cheese? Jello. <laughs> can't, you can't play with the jello. Cause I ain't gonna lie. Like, one Thanksgiving, my wife made. She didn't make as much macaroni and cheese as she mm. usually does. So I had like a ten-year-old cousin, right, who was in line in front of me to get the food, right. So after I pushed him down and took the rest of the, oh <laughs> man, you I had to, man. Does that ever happen? See, I mean, listen, if I eat, I, I eat the Mac, I love Mac, but I gotta have the Mac my yams. If I can't have the Mac and yams, I don't know. Mm. Now I got a question. So, you know, you were saying a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of the food, it comes from, uh, is plant-based. Mm -hmm. Now in your country, do you see a lot of the same uh, diseases when it comes to uh, food-related diseases that you see in America? No, I don't see no food related disease at all like in my country. Like diabetes and all that other stuff. Nah, a lot of um, a lot of that is like dead down because we we don't eat preserved a lot of preserved food or things like that. So I don't I don't see a lot of diabetes like that. Um, because I mean that's that. nice to hear because I mean a lot of times we think just because we black we gonna get diabetes, but it's it's really about what we eat. It's know? really I mean it's really about what we eat and you understand too like. Not nobody. We can't say anybody in the next five to ten miles on a farm to say, yo, my family owns a little farm we're gonna grab. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna grab from there. I mean like that's why you see the Amish. They they good. Yeah. They they usually healthy. I mean yeah. like Yeah, but everything they feed us is full of sugar. They no, that's not it. true. <laughs> yo, they be donuts and That's not true, but you I think we 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 the type of we the type of people that go and eat that shit every day. They probably eat that shit maybe like once a month. Yeah, but they make that shit every day and sell it to us. Yeah, so you could eat them all. But I wanna—I just want to interrupt whatever the fuck y'all was talking about. <laughs> this is excellent. Appreciate it, brother. This is excellent, Appreciate bro. It. This is my first time ever eating Liberian food. This shit rocking, bro. 
I'm supposed to be on a diet. I can't even really eat this <laughs> shit. I mean, it's, it's potatoes. Oh, I mean, bananas. Bananas. I'm a, you, you can cut in. I was wrong. I was wrong. Mm. So, um, is there any? Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about? You know, the Liberian culture, uh, your restaurant in general. Um, my restaurant in general, man. Uh, the the tr just the tremendous growth as in um, in the last four years. It's been like tremendous growth. It's just the help of just the era we're in right now. We're, we're, we're in an era where when you're young, you got to take initiative. And I just say that to mm -hmm. everybody. everybody like how you start a business, how you do this. Um, a lot of people in the playing field with me, they're like 45 like um, or probably older. They've been in the business for the last 30 years. I've only been in business like four to five years. And it just takes research, ambition, and just using the tools that we have ahead of us. Like, we got tools right now where we could, we don't need a PR, we don't need a news, mm -hmm. we don't need things like that. We use the social media just to elevate and do what we gotta do. And I just say that to everybody, is just use your resources, man. Mm -hmm. Your resources are the key when it comes to whatever business you wanna start. Like, put some time into that. Take some time out of the little things that you don't need to be into mm -hmm. and put some time into looking at your resources and um, just kind of getting things together. That's like my biggest thing. I mean, like, it, it's, it's a lot with the restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. it, won't be, it won't be easy, it won't be cake, but you're gonna have a lot of trial and errors. So hit that trial and error. Um, after you get through that trial and error, you're gonna, you gonna see the result later on down the line. Like, I'm still waiting for my result. Ain't mm -hmm. no result here yet. Mm -hmm. But like, one of the results is having you guys here. Yeah. I mean, and just kind of, and, and, I, and I want to add this too. I think that uh, I think the best thing that a lot of when you when you start from the ground up is your product. Now I'm just be quite honest. If this the product, you know, you ain't got to work too hard to sell it. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like I, I've never eaten Liberian food before in my life. Like I'm gonna come back here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit is good. So it's like at the end of the day, if the people who know what you do want to talk about it. And all you gotta do is just make sure every time they come through, they getting the same product. You yeah. know what I mean? Supply and demand. Yeah, man. Because I mean, as soon as I bit into it, I was like, yo. I mean, I, mean, I can come in here. I for mean, like, one thing I can definitely say is the product is definitely stamped. Like, the mm -hmm. product is stamped. And um, there's an era where, like, I could say growing up, people didn't even wanna try the product or things like that. But my whole, my whole idea is to bring this product to life where mm -hmm. you guys feel comfortable eating it. Um, just like you may feel comfortable eating Jamaican or Italian cuisine and things like that. It's something new to people. Yeah. So, I mean, I know, I know it's a hard thing to try. I mean, it was a hard thing for me to try duck at first. But when I was in Paris, it's like, why not? Just why not go with yeah, the culture? Duck is I'm is chicken, but like I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm going to You know what? Word? I'm not going to say it today. But they stole from y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't, don't ask me what you're talking about. Please don't ask me. The motherfuckers that run these stores, <laughs> the Golden Dragon, the whatever this shit is. <laughs> you almost said it. You almost said it. Motherfucker. You gonna bleep it out anyway. Motherfucking. Whatever this recipe is, they <laughs> stole it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you're looking for some flavorful rice, man, like, if you're looking for, like, just flavorful food, flavorful rice, get on Liberian food, man. I mean, I could definitely speak for kings and queens to the fullest. You come here, we got almost three different type of rice and even more, to, but everything has its own distinct flavor. Like we literally put the flavor in the food for y'all to taste it, get the joy of it. And mm -hmm. like, and everything is from scratch and natural, like literally bell peppers and onions mm -hmm. and things like that. We, we, we prep, we put a lot of time into this food. Like there's love in the food, mm -hmm. time in the food, everything. For you guys to come check it out, get, get the experience and kind of move from there. And I'm just hoping, uh, I'm praying as in the goal is just to continue to grow mm -hmm. to the fullest with the black excellence and just get the food out to everybody. So we got to talk about it, man. Okay, let's talk about Since it. Since we talk about all this good black excellence and mm -hmm. all this good food, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, we definitely got to support black businesses yeah. and other black people. Did you see that sweater that Gucci, Gucci made that everybody's in the uproar about? Yeah, I saw it. Hmm. Did you see it? Yeah, I seen. I seen. So how do you feel about now? Every now everybody want to boycott Gucci. I mean, 
I guess I'm, I'm looking at it like twofold, you know what I mean? Like first, I see what Gucci tried to do. Like it's the same shit with Bay the Neat when they had the dumbass hoodies that zip up that had the monster face on it. You know what I'm saying? And motherfuckers was running around robbing people with the Bay the Neat hoodie zipped up. You, you know I'm talking about the fatigue hoodie mm -hmm. that had like the dinosaur face on yeah, it. Yeah, it was a dinosaur, but it so, wasn't like. Whatever it was. And I see Gucci wanted to try to get some of that money. <laughs> So they made this dumbass sweater, right? <laughs> that made it blackface. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, like, if, if the sweater was green with pink lips, we wouldn't have no issue with it. Possibly. Yeah. But it just fucked up that the first sweater that they put out is black with the red lips. And then everybody's in the fucking uproar. Oh, Gucci racist, Gucci racist. Oh, fucking, they been racist. <laughs> they been motherfucking racist. What you thought? What you thought? That's because you could go in the store and buy the shit. I've been boycotting Gucci all my life. I want to ask you because you're a business owner. You know, how do you feel about? I guess it's always good that black uh, black people support black businesses, mm -hmm. but it seems like it's like when you know people who aren't black do something that offends us. All of a sudden, now we got we got to run to the black businesses. I know. I know. I, I would assume that you know you you would have liked the the patronage, but how do you feel that? people aren't supporting black businesses in the first place. Mm. I mean, first, we, we, I'll touch up on the whole Gucci thing. Um, I feel as, I mean, coming from a marketing and management background, there's a group of 12 people or probably six people mm -hmm. that's in this room. And um, for nobody to kind of realize, okay, maybe we shouldn't put out the black one or what it kind of look like. Like, these people get paid a lot of fucking money. Yeah, somebody, somebody got fired. Like, they get paid a lot of money, so mm -hmm. maybe somebody got fired, maybe somebody did, maybe it was a rush over their head, but they get paid a lot of money to literally sit down and look at one product and mm -hmm. say, okay, yeah, this product's gonna move, this product's not gonna move, what we gonna do? Like, that's their job, they wake up and go look at a product, that's all they look at, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. So, I feel that they could've been more careful with it, but um, yeah. just the whole support of Gucci in general, I'm not saying I want to buy Gucci, but I, I don't really look at the, I always been like a self-made type person, yeah. so I don't really like do the buying of the Gucci or the Louis thing. Like, not saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't when I get the money, or maybe yeah. when actually yeah. maybe if something may look nice or things like that, if I could pay it up, so I probably would have, probably would, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But in general, when it comes to like everybody just running back to black businesses, it's like, okay, how long are you going to run to now? Or mm -hmm. just on some fact that when people get a complaint about a mainstream business that may be owned by a Caucasian person or so, they tend to like take that and like, I ain't, mm -hmm. no, maybe I should call and complain, maybe I shouldn't. But then you get the first person, you get some black people that go to a black business and get a, and get a bad experience that one time. Yeah, I want to speak to the manager. I want to speak to the manager. Like, you don't take your time and give it a second time. Because I, I had some people that, let's say they didn't just like one thing, they wrote me and I'm like, oh, this is probably why you didn't like this. Because mm -hmm. some people may have, I got more than 25 things on my list. Yeah. You can't just try one thing and say, yo, I don't like this place, yeah. or yo, like, it's 20, that's maybe just be something you just didn't yeah. like. Because yeah, people don't like, get that mad when they get a bad fish for life. They just yeah. like, you, go, you go to McDonald's, somebody don't make your Big Mac the right way, you're not sending the letter back, yo, I didn't want it. It's like, yeah. like, literally, you don't have time to go on McDonald's. You can go write a review on that McDonald's. Yeah. But like, nobody, never, will nobody will go write a review on that McDonald's. But they'll want to go straight head to head for the first time. I say if you write in your review, yeah, I tried one, two, three times, and I spoke to a manager, this and that. Like, we can understand why they ain't, they just regard it. Mm -hmm. It's just, they, they put it so hard on black businesses. It's like, damn, we trying our best, or damn, um, at least give the report on it and just yeah, see, no. see if it's corrected, see if it's not corrected. Or in general, like, there's a few black businesses, there's, there's like one or two black businesses that I didn't really, like, enjoy the, I didn't really enjoy, like, the, the whole experience. experience or whatever it is. I just stopped going there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I speak to somebody personal, as in my friend, yeah. uh, you went there. Nah, I wasn't really messing with them like that. It's cool. Yeah. But I would, I would, I would, I mean, like, I would try to give them a tip or I would do this. But I wouldn't, like, just go and just, if they out of pocket, out of pocket, then, I mean, like, just me per se, I still went, but I was still, like, 
I'm man, be honest with you. It, it gotta take me there, take me there. I've never had a bad experience in the black business. Never. I can honestly say that through my whole life. If it was a restaurant, a clothing store, whatever it was, I can honestly say I've never walked into a black business and left out of there like fuck them. I might have went in there and been like, they don't got a lot of variety. So I'll come back here maybe once every couple months and see what they got new in here. If they selling food, you know what I'm saying? I go in there, I, I'll get what I like, and then I'm not the type of person that need to eat the same foods every week. So it's like, I get what I like, and I'll be like, I don't want it to get bad to me, so I'll come here once a month and do something with them, you know what I'm saying? But like, I've never had a bad experience in the black business. And the thing that killed me about people at times is like, you won't go in Gucci store and ask for a discount. You won't go in Gucci store and ask for a play but you'll go in the black business and say, yo, let me get a play on this, let me get a play on both of these together, whatever case may be. And it's like, yo, right now, nowadays, that's how a lot of stuff going in the world. Like, I feel like Jay-Z a little bit when he was like, imagine me drink uh, Belvedere when Puffy got Ciroc. You know what I mean? Yeah. So imagine me go spending $2,000 when Gucci, when El Revere off right here in North Philly. You know what I'm saying? Sure, like I got Elvira shirt. Sure. You feel me? Like I like I I I don't, I don't have too much. I have I haven't spent any money with Milano, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna go spend money with Fendi when Milano right here in the city. You know what I'm saying? And these is black designers in the city. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and that's and that's just the route that I'm pretty much gonna go for the rest of my days. Like I'm not going I'm not going overextend myself to kiss they ass and wear them wear that shit that they got, especially when you coming out with black face turtlenecks. Like, what is that? I don't know. I can, I can say they definitely didn't have a black person in the room. That's what I'm saying. What, Cause like, he would have been like, yo, but that's probably- No, but they probably <laughs> did. You ever, see, you ever seen the movie Bamboozle? Has anybody ever seen the movie Bamboozle with, uh, what, with Damon Wayans in it and Jada Pinkett? Listen, man, the dude was doing his best to try to come up with some wholesome black TV. Michael Rappaport told him, no, we don't want wholesome black TV. We want nigga shit. He went and created this dude named Mantan. And, the, and his, his right-hand man was sleeping eat. And he, they used to, it was Savion Glover and Tommy Davidson. They'd come out in blackface and tap dance and everything. Like, the roots was in it and the whole nine. Like, you really got to watch this, watch this movie because when they showed the so-called experts in the room, like you're talking about, the only black person was Delacroix, who's uh, Damon Wayans, and these white people was in there like, well, I have a degree in African-American studies, and we should go with this. So it, was, it probably was a black person in the room that was like, nah, this shit looks racially insensitive. I and the rest of them something. was like, uh, sorry, but <laughs> my degree from Harvard in African-American <laughs> History says that we're gonna go with this. Maybe. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's all just crazy, man. So as far as I'm concerned, man, in some aspects of our life, we gotta keep keep the black dollar with the black people, man. And then we won't have those type of mistakes, man. That's how I feel. Indeed. Facts, man. That's, that's facts. I mean, it, it, it's like I said. I see a lot of people in the city too that put quality in their clothing. Yeah. They definitely put quality in their clothing, and it's like. We got to turn those into mainstream clothing because once they get that revenue mm -hmm. and they get that, at least let's give them a chance to get that mm -hmm. revenue to get up there in order to get a bigger supplier from China mm -hmm. or to get a bigger supplier from here and there. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you need that revenue in order to get bulk or better yeah. quality in order to do things like that. So I feel, I feel them like it's like you got to get up there in order to get basically that financial funding yeah. or if you want to spread your shares of your business. All of that takes growth. You yeah. gotta start, but people gotta support you to a certain yeah. place. And then that growth is where you get the shares and you grow a bigger yep. business. Yep. So we don't get them that chance. It's like we're not gonna see how they're gonna grow. Or because what you ain't do. supporting it. You're not, you're not, as they say, watering the flower. You can't, you never, you, nobody appreciate the rose when it's just the seed trying to grow out the grass. Everybody appreciate the rose once you can see it and you can, and you can snatch it out the ground. But you're supposed to appreciate the process of that rose growing, and then that's what stops you from snatching it out the ground. Because now that you wanted to grow, you wanted to live its full life. You know what I'm saying? With anything else, somebody get big, 
everybody find ways to try to clip him off. I don't want to clip him off. I want him to live. I want him to grow it's as far as he's going to grow. <clears throat> get, get everything that he got in store for him. And then when his time come, his time come. All right, so let the people know where they can reach you, how they can visit all your stores. All right, once again, my name is Sir Ahmed. I'm here with Soul Professional Team. Yeah. So basically, um, you can reach me. We right here in Upper Derby, 107 Fairfield Avenue. Um, come check us out. This in Upper Derby, right, literally like a block away from, this is Philly, I would say, but we a block away from 69th Street Terminal. Hop on the train, hop on the trolley, however it is, get down here, come experience the culture. Uh, check us out on Instagram, we really big on there. We got updates and everything within the restaurants. Kings, K-I-N-G-S, A-N-D-Q-U-E-E-N-S, L-C. Kings and Queens, L-C, check us out there on Facebook and on Instagram with the Kings and Queens LC. And we also on Twitter too, Kings, Queens, LC on Twitter. Don't put the and in between for the Twitter. And then um, basically come down here, man, get experience with that culture. Remember life is too short for average food. Definitely come expand your taste buds. Yeah. Like literally, yeah. come expand your taste buds. I promise you, you, you going like something in here, something. I definitely just want to co-sign with some man saying food is great. Definitely get out here <clears throat> and support them as best you can. Uh, you know, you can, you can follow uh, us at uh, So I'm Professional on Instagram. So I'm Professional Show. Shut up, pussy. Let me at So I'm Professional Show. Leave <laughs> you know, Yeah. <laughs> On, uh, on, on Instagram, I'm blocking. You can't be me, bro. I'm making some of this rice. Yeah, do that. Some extra power. There we go. And uh, mm -hmm. follow us on all social media platforms. Also follow uh, at Street Talking Ish, which is the podcast and then that radio show we do. Uh, Headquarters Media. Follow head. Come on, yo, you do it, man. No, you do it. No, make sure you follow Headquarters Media. Get <clears throat> dickhead. <laughs> follow me, check me up. Get some of this plantain, some of this gravy, some of this rice. We got the, what's the punch called again? Royal Punch. We got the Royal Punch, that shit came out smoother. Mm-hmm. You might change your name for like Valentine's Day, like a special Valentine's Day Royal punch. punch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ocean. Uh-huh. Yeah. Put a little bit extra in there. Put a little pill cosmic. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> yo, he's starting to reveal like who he really is. Yo, get yo. me off this show. Yo, we, we out. Are we out. We out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>